kilometer, nothing, it's nothing, together with the Golan Heights and with Judea and Samaria that some of you know by the name, uh, the West Bank, because it's on the western bank of the River Jordan. All together with this, it's only 28,000 square kilometers, which is a nothing. You can drive from north to the south of Israel, it's only 600 kilometers. And before we got control of this area of Judea and Samaria, I'll call it Judea and Samaria, you will know that it is what you hear in the news as West Bank. This area of Samaria and Judea, yeah? Uh, before we got control of it, when we got it from Jordan, when Jordan attacked Israel in 67, the border was here, you see? Just here, which means uh, <coughs> mountains, mountains, some of them thousand, uh, a little less than 1,000 meters high, and then here stood the army, the Jordanian army, and the border was 12 kilometers <coughs> from the sea. Can you imagine such a border? What is 12 kilometers? Nothing. <coughs> so this is why, are you now going to be sick? No. <laughs> no, no. I hope not. So, uh, now, take a uh, notice that uh, the map shows you colors. You see the green along the sea coast? Yeah. And you see the brown from the north, from the upper Galilee, <laughs> lower Galilee, Samaria, Judea. And even if I turn <laughs> the map, you would see that it continues a long mountain range all the way down to the Red Sea. Okay? And what do you see otherwise? You see green color on the eastern part of Israel. You see that? Yeah. And it is darker green than on the coast. Which means, it, what does it mean green? It's flat. What does it mean brownish or yellowish? It's high, it's mountainy. And what does it mean dark green? That it is flat and below sea level. So you understand how Israel is built topographically? mountain, flat and below sea level. It is a very dangerous topography, topography for Israel's survival. Why? Because here, the little narrow uh, strip of the sea coast is very hard to uh, defend if you don't sit on the mountains or if your enemies sit on the mountains. You understand? Yeah. Now, uh, we are we are here. We left Haifa. Haifa is uh, the port of Israel, one of three ports. Here you see it's a natural bay. And uh, if you go down along the map, you see somewhere Tel Aviv. And then below Tel Aviv, you see Ashdod. Ashdod is a name that you know from the Old Testament. It is one of the five Philistine cities that existed along the sea coast of Israel. Just here, uh, Ashdod, Ashkelon, Gaza, Gat, and Ekron. The Philistines used to live in that area and used to fight with the Israelites. You hear a lot about Philistines and Israelites wars all the time, if you remember, if you ever read the, the Old Testament. The Philistines disappeared uh, uh, in the year 721 BC. BC? Why? They fought together with the ten tribes of Israel against the Assyrians, the Assyrians that were living in what we call today Syria, more or less. And the fight was ended by victory to the Assyrians, and the Israeli ten tribes of Israel disappeared. It was called the Kingdom of Israel. And the Philistines disappeared. How did they disappear? In those ancient times, 3,000 years ago, every war of those big powers ended by taking the local people out and putting them somewhere else and bringing from another place people to this place that will be the local people. You understand? In this way, they wanted to disconnect people from their homeland so that there will be no more wars with them. This is why maybe you ever heard about the idea of the ten lost tribes of Israel. And this is something that uh, happened because after the time of Solomon, 
there was a split between the 12 tribes of Israel. Two tribes were called the Kingdom of Judea, with Jerusalem, uh, with Jerusalem somewhere here, I don't see so clear now, somewhere here on the mountains of Judea as a capital. And the 10 tribes of Israel split and didn't come anymore to Jerusalem. They built their own capitals, in some other places, in Dan, in the north, never mind all that. It is not necessary details now, I just want to explain to you why are they called the lost tribes of Israel, okay? And uh, so, uh, this is uh, the port Haifa, where you came. Tomorrow you will be in Ashdod, one of those past Philistine uh, uh, towns, one of five. And the Philistines disappeared. Who were the Philistines? The Philistines were Greek people that came from Crete and Greek. Greece, Greece, from Greece, and settled here along the coast at the same time as the Jews, Israelites, came with Joshua. You remember maybe the story of Joshua leading the people of Israel into the country, leaving Egypt, walking in the desert. You remember they were slaves 400 years. They walked in the desert in the Sinai. Then they came into the country and conquered it. They came in from Jericho. Jericho is here and entered into the country and conquered. And the Philistines came from Crete, from the sea. They were seamen. They were seamen connected to the sea. Now, uh, we are going from Haifa today to Nazareth. Nazareth is here somewhere on the mountains of the Lower Galilee. What does it mean, Lower Galilee? It is compared to the Upper Galilee. The upper mountains in the, on the map, above the Sea of Galilee, the upper part is called the Upper Galilee. Why? It is double as high as the Lower Galilee, which includes also the Sea of Galilee. You see? Those two mountain ranges, they are different in height. Very high and barren, Upper Galilee, with Safed, and, and Safed you might know as Christians and other cities, and Nazareth here on the Lower Galilee Mountains. Below the Lower Galilee, you see those mountains of Samaria, and a part of the mountains of Samaria is Mount Carmel. And uh, today we shall, in the end of the day, we shall climb on Mount Carmel. That will be the last station of the tour. So, we are going to Nazareth now. Nazareth is actually a central city for the Lower Galilee area. It's an Arab populated city today. In, in ancient times, it was a Jewish city, of course. And especially also in the time of Jesus. But in the time of Jesus, 2,000 years ago, it was not a city. It, was, it is not even mentioned once in the Old Testament. It is only mentioned in the New Testament in connection with Jesus. And it was just a little, little village of 500 people, something of the kind. Uh, today, Nazareth is the biggest city for Arabs in the Lower Galilee area and serves them as a center for culture, for uh, media, for uh, politics, everything, you know? And serves all the Arabic villages that are around Nazareth that we shall pass through uh, during the tour. In Nazareth, you remember that Jesus uh, grew up. He was born in Bethlehem, south of Jerusalem, here. Nine kilometers from Jerusalem, because his parents had to go there to be counted as part of the Judean tribe. They belong to the Judean tribe, right? In the time of Jesus, the ten tribes of Israel has gone. You remember, 700 years before. So now we have only one kingdom in this country, and this is the kingdom of Judea. Why is it called Judea? Named after one of the sons of Jacob, the 12 tribes, the 12 sons, Judah, Yehuda, Yehuda. It means, um, thanks God, thanks to God, Yehuda, Judah. And in Judea we had Jerusalem as the capital, of course, when I tell you that the ten tribes of Israel disappeared, it does not mean that each and every one was taken out. So, we are today, as a nation, 
the nation of Israel, is still have, has remnants of those ten, ten tribes that disappeared. But as, a tri as tribes, as a kingdom, they disappeared. You understand me? Okay. Now, uh, uh, Jesus lived in Nazareth with his family. He was a carpenter together with his father. And as you remember, uh, one day, uh, Jesus preached to the people in Nazareth, in a synagogue, it says. And the people of Nazareth uh, uh, were not uh, satisfied with him. They wanted to shoot him out <coughs> of, the, uh, of the little town or village. So they ran after him, it says, in the New Testament, and wanted to throw him out from a mountain range. But it says that he just walked between them and disappeared. So there is a, a mountain that is called Mount Precipice, which is the, the mountain of the jump, as if, you know? And that's where we are going to start the tour. We shall stop there, we shall leave the bus, and you shall take your earphones. It's a little walk of five minutes. We shall go and have a fantastic view. I want to show you the church that has been built uh, on the house of Jesus, uh, or of the family, uh, according to tradition. It's a very, uh, you know, who knows? But anyway, that's the tradition that points it as the house of the family, where Mary got the Annunciation from the angel. And just nearby is a little church that is called the Church of St. Joseph, where the family lived after the marriage, and uh, when they were carpenters and so on, they found their uh, kind of a, a grotto or a cave under, which uh, is believed to be the place where the carpenter house was. Okay? This will be the beginning. I want just to mention that everywhere here around us, it's only Arabic villages and Arabs that live. Look at the beautiful villa, villa houses they have, they're very rich in Israel. Uh, take a look at the roof. Now, this is a new mode that the Arabs are making such red tiles because this is not something that you need in Israel. You don't have snow. It is more mostly for snow, but this is uh, probably some status or whatever. You can always recognize Arab houses in Israel. When you look on the top of the house, if you see a bucket, if you see the black buckets, it's Arabs. If you see white buckets, it's Jewish. So this is an Arab village we are going, we are driving now through. Most of the lower Galilee is populated with Arabs. And Nazareth, as I told you, is the biggest uh, Arab city in the lower Galilee area. And you see the black buckets on the top? Back to our uh, explanation about Nazareth. Uh, the Church of Annunciation, yeah, is the one that we shall see from the point of view that we are going through to, to go to. And we are going to drive, as I say, to Mount Precipice. From Mount Precipice, we shall continue down. And that means that we shall leave the mountains where we are now. Of the, of the lower Galilee here, and we shall drive down to the southern part of the Sea of Galilee. This is the Sea of Galilee, and do you see the River Jordan here? You see? The River Jordan ends in the Dead Sea. This is the Dead Sea. That's the last station where the water falls into. That's the lowest place in the world, 400 meters below sea level. That's the lowest point on Earth. And from there, the water evaporates and leaves salts and minerals and so on. It has been happening for millions and millions of years. And this is why this is so salted today. It has 33% salt in the Dead Sea. 
which means uh, if you will dry one cup of uh, water uh, from the Dead Sea, you will get a third of the cup full of salt. Can you imagine? That's a lot. And also they say, see, all around you, you see only Arab uh, villages and you see also minarets of the mosques. You see? Yeah. And you see the black bucket? As we see. I want to finish just to say to you what we're going to do after. After Yardanit, we shall drive here to a kibbutz. This is an agricultural settlement. One of the first kibbutzim that were built in Israel. And we shall eat in the kibbutz. After that, we shall drive along the eastern coast of the Sea of Galilee, here, to the place where the multiplication of the fish and the bread happened. Then we shall see Mount Beatitude. Then we shall leave the area. This is the Church of Annunciation. Uh, do you have any questions about Nazareth? If not, so let's just turn there and then go back quickly to the bus. I want to show you something. There is also a spring there. And what is the story of the spring and the, and the whale? According to the Catholics, according to the Catholics, Mary got the, the meeting with the angel in her house, in her parents' house. That's where the Church of Annunciation is. Where the angel says to her, Ave Maria, be happy Mary, you will be the mother and so on. But the Greek Orthodox, they say, that Mary met Archangel Gabriel near the water of Nazareth when she went with her jug to collect water from the well and there all of a sudden she saw Archangel Gabriel who told her uh, be happy Mary so therefore the Greek Orthodox built a church 
which is called the Church of Annunciation, in another place. And it is uh, called the Church of Saint Gabriel, Archangel Gabriel. Um, we shall see along the road a little building covering at the place where there is a well and just a little road behind, we don't see it, there is this Church of the Greek Orthodox. Do you know what is the difference between Catholics and Greek Orthodox? Shall I tell you? Yes. Okay. You know that Christianity started in Israel and uh, it was Jews in the beginning. Then it, it became, uh, uh, there, was, it was no, there was no need anymore to follow Judaism, to convert to Judaism if someone was a Roman soldier or something. They didn't have to convert. First it was needed to convert to Judaism and then you could continue like to, be, to become a believer in Jesus. But uh, after, from here. And actually you can see the church from your windows on your right side if you can. See the church? This church is very high. It is 49 meters high. Uh, the, 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 the architect who built it was Muccio, Giovanni Muccio, an Italian. It's a Catholic church, of course, and it was financed by the, uh, what do you call it, the, where the Pope is. They decided to make such a high, uh, Giovanni Muccio decided to make a very high tower that looks like a watchtower, because the name Nazareth, I told you, means Nozer, a watch, watching place, because it's high on the mountains. So this is like a watch guard, a watching uh, tower. On the top of it, there is a lighthouse, if you can see. And this is because he, may, he said that Nazareth should be a lighthouse for all the Christians in the world. And uh, call them here to Nazareth to visit the place where Jesus grew up. And then, uh, what else can I tell you about it? Yeah. Uh, the church, as I told you, is very tall, is very high, but it combines in it the, the, the crusaders' remains, ruins, that were built with the basalt. Basalt is a black stone. It is a black stone from the Golan Heights. We shall see a lot of basalt today as we shall get closer to the Sea of Galilee. <laughs> לא, ליירדנית, כמה זמן? A couple that was worried about not These are other groups, you see them? Yeah. Patra? But they chose another tour where they go to the church. Okay, so let me tell you what is the meaning of the word Israel. The Bible is telling us about the three forefathers. There was Abraham coming from where Persia is today, Babel, Babylon, uh, and then uh, God told him, go wherever I'll show you, and that will be your country, I'll give it to you, and so on. He comes here, he lives here as a stranger with Sarah, then he gets his two sons, Ismael from the Arab woman, from the Egyptian uh, slave woman, uh, Hagar, and then he gets from Sarah, the son, uh, uh, Isaac, then he goes to... ...here in straight on the left side. This is the place which is built on the well, which is the well of Mary. Mary's well, okay? And behind it, if you went on the little street, you would get to the Greek Orthodox Church. 
but I'd never finished with the Greek Orthodox. So the first Christians were Greek Orthodox, and that meant that they did not believe Jesus was God himself. You know that there is in Christianity the Trinity, Holy Trinity, you know what I mean? Now, how is the Holy Trinity built? For the Greek Orthodox, originally it was a triangle like that. The top is God, then the two uh, bottom uh, points, it is Jesus and the Holy Spirit. But in the 5th century there was an ecumenical discussion between all uh, the leaders of the churches and then some of them said no let's turn the triangle upside down so that it will be like that and the point down so that will be God that will be Jesus they are the same and down below is the Holy Spirit and this is the people that split into another uh, section in Christianity called Catholics. You understand the difference? Greek Orthodox are the original Christians. They believed God is above Jesus. The Catholics changed it and said, no, God and Jesus, that's the same. And the Holy Spirit is down below, under. That is that. So that is the difference, okay? Here in straight on the left side. This is the place which is built on the well, which is the well of Mary. Mary's well. Okay? And behind it, if you went on the little street, you would get to the Greek Orthodox Church. But I'd never finished with the Greek Orthodox. So the first Christians were Greek Orthodox, and that meant that they did not believe Jesus was God himself. You know that there is in Christianity the Trinity, Holy Trinity, you know what I mean? Now, how is the Holy Trinity built? For the Greek Orthodox, originally it was a triangle like that. The top is God, then the two uh, bottom uh, points, it is Jesus and the Holy Spirit. But in the 5th century, there was an ecumenical discussion between all uh, the leaders of the churches. And then some of them said, no, let's turn the triangle upside down so that it will be like that and the point down so that will be god that will be jesus they are the same and down below is the holy spirit and this is the people that split into another uh, section in christianity called catholics you understand the difference greek orthodox are the original christians they believed God is above Jesus. The Catholics changed it and said, no, God and Jesus, that's the same. And the Holy Spirit is down below, under. That is that. So that is the difference, okay? The Israeli couples, normally both of them work. There is a very low rate of, of Arab women working out of the house. But uh, nearly all the Jewish women, I don't know if it's 70 or 80 percent, work out. So you know, when both work out, you cannot allow yourself just to make bread every morning and cook the food. You buy a lot of ready-made food. You pay a lot for the children garden. So Jewish families have more expenses. Now Arabs live in bigger houses. You see, it's like more, more like villa. Houses. Jews live more in, um, uh, how do I call it, a uh, uh, city, you know, city with uh, high houses. Apartments. Ten apartments, more small apartments, yes, uh, with, uh, with many, many neighbors and so on. Today Israel is going through a, a process of, in all the big cities of Israel, like Haifa, Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, destroying the house to destroy let's say a house with 20 apartments and build a house with 60 apartments so they get three times more you understand and the middle number is to cover the expense of the destroying and the building and the top is their uh, the, the earning 
So therefore you see that why does Israel, the, the government of Israel is giving actually every person in such houses a gift. He doesn't have to pay a shekel, nothing. It is then he has to sign for the entrepreneur and then uh, to find a, a lawyer company that is uh, 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 helping them and that's a heights on the other side of the Sea of Galilee. Yeah. Now remember that until 1967, the Six Days War, the Syrians were sitting just on the slopes. Israel had only a third of the slope and the Syrians were with the bunkers uh, all the way two-thirds of the slopes of uh, the mountains, the Golan Heights. The Sea of Galilee, of the Kinneret, 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 the name is uh, from the Hebrew Kino. Kino is a heart. Because if you look from above on the Sea of Galilee, look on the map, you see it looks like ancient harps. Like the one David played upon, yeah. right? Now this is the Ganya P. You saw on the sign. The Ganya, what does it mean, the Ganya? It means a wheat, wheat field. Now this kibbutz, this agricultural settlement we are going to eat in, is called the Ganya P. Why is there the Ganya A, the Ganya B? And by the way, these on your left, you see these are banana plantations. They are being covered with this net against uh, sand uh, um, winds, when there are winds in here, very strong winds, and against the bats. The bats, they love to eat bananas. So the bananas are normally, the bunch is covered with a plastic bag. And, rega, so this is the kibbutz, guys. Oh, we're here already? Okay. Ah, the Yamina. Yes, we are in the kibbutz, you see? If you're interested, what is a kibbutz? I can tell you later. Remind me. Huh? In the middle? Yeah. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Wide selection of food. Okay. Okay. Glad that you are happy about it. Yeah? Okay. So now nobody is hungry or thirsty? No. no. What is a kibbutz? Okay. And now I'll sit down and tell you about the kibbutz. We are driving now through the kibbutz. You know when the Jews uh, decided to come back to Israel, do you know anything about it or shall I tell you a little bit about it? You have to tell us. A little bit. Okay. What happened was that in 1882 came the first group of Zionists. What is Zionism? Z you know that no, this country... No, she right in front of the bus. What? This is your turn. Yeah. Oh, this is like my friend. She's cute, so she thinks she's... Ma, it's a tough look, ma. Did you say this is a kibbutz, ma? She can't get by. Ma? Ma, right there. In 1870, 78 years in exile. In all countries they spread. After the, the Roman uh, uh, destruction of the temple in the year 70 uh, AD. And then 73 they, destro they destroyed Masada. That was the last stronghold in Israel. And then the Jews were shooed out. Not all of them. Always were there the Jews here. Everywhere in all the ancient uh, settlements. But it was not anymore sovereignty or any Jewish country anymore. Now, the Jews pray in the book, in the book prayer from the Old Testament all the time that next year in Jerusalem, they never forgot Jerusalem, they never forgot the wish to come back to their country, but it took 1878 years, oh. yeah, until we started coming back. Now, what is uh, the reason for the Jews to come back? Because in the 19th century, in the end, in Europe, all nations become become more nationalistic. All of a sudden, uh, nations are 
uh, uh, declaring that they are this and this nation, they unite and so on. And then the Jews also become more nationalistic, which they were not in all those 2,000 years. Yeah. And, it and uh, then they found a Zionistic movement in different countries, especially in Eastern Europe, in Russia, Poland, and so on, Lita. And now take a look, we are coming out of the kibbutz, the Ganya. We are turning to the right, to the right. So which means that we are now continuing to drive all the time along the uh, southern uh, coast of the Sea of Galilee. Take a look to your left, far away, 20 kilometers from here, is where the Jordan River is coming into the sea. Okay? And then we shall turn to the left and drive just under the Golan Heights. You can see the beginning of the Golan Heights just in front of you. And then you can see the Gilead, which I told you about in the Bible, in the Old Testament. Uh, there were two and a half tribes of the people of Israel. They used to sit on the other side of the Jordan Valley and River. It was on the top of the Golan, it was uh, half of uh, Gad and uh, no, sorry, no, no, half of Menashe and then on the right where Jordan is today used to be two tribes, the tribe Reuben, Reuben and the tribe Gad. Gad. So we are now driving just see everywhere it is packed with Israelis, you see? Yeah. That are on holiday here, they make some tents, they bathe in the sea, the children are free from school, all the parents are fed up with their children because they just had them two months in the summer, summer uh, holidays and woo, now again and then soon we shall have the, the holiday of tabernacles which is also 10 days at home. Oh, yeah. yeah, so this is a month which is really, really heavy for the parents. On your right you see a center for all the uh, products of the Sea of Galilee area are coming here. The dates, the wheat and things like that are all being here, assembled in, those, uh, uh, in, in this center and then it is being packed and so on. It's called Tzemach, this place. And on your, okay, Tzemach, Tzemach means a uh, uh, plant. And this is the place where it is all being packed and sent on, either to, uh, to as come here. When they come, they buy from the Turks small areas, like the Ganya where we have now been, and they settle very few people. And they found here five uh, settlements in Israel, in, in Eretz Israel. That was the beginning of the Zionist uh, return to Israel. Now, wh where is the word Zionism comes from? You know that Israel has many names. One of them is Zion, Zion. So therefore, Zionism means we, that are Zionist, believe that the Jews have no other place to solve their problem all over the world, in exile, but in Zion, but in Zion. And this is why it's called Zionism. Okay? And therefore, it is also nicknamed the Zionistic state because it was beginning, it began with Zionism. And now, what is the kibbutz? In the beginning, uh, the people of Israel that came here, they knew nothing about agriculture, right? Because you remember that they have been in their uh, own land. That is why the Jews expertized in jewelry in lending money, in uh, working with diamonds. Why? Because when you work with those things, you can easily take them and run away. If they chew you, pursue you, want to kill you, compromise on you, you can take it and run. And anyway, the non-Jews did not allow the Jews to buy land because it was a way to hinder them from settling, if you understand. That is why the Israelites, the Jews all over the world, had no idea how do you work the land? They forgot all the know-how that they had in the Bible time. They didn't know anymore. So they, uh, yeah. they, they built a school, a special school, to teach agriculture. And those people that settled on the land in the kibbutzim, you see we are passing all the time kibbutzim. This is on the left, kibbutz Ha'on. 
all of them are agricultural settlements, but today they have also many of them factories, and they have become very rich today. Because take a look, we are driving now under the Golan Heights, remember? Now think about it. From 1948, the War of Independence of Israel, when Israel was attacked by seven countries, and even though it was attacked and there were only 600,000 Jews here, we won the war. That was the first miracle. Then 19 years after, we are attacked by Syria that was up here, Jordan that was in the south, and Egypt in the south, and the south of the Sinai Desert. So what happened was, as I told you in the morning, a miracle happened, and we won also the Six Days War in six days. And when we pushed the Syrians away from here, 21 kilometers, that was when all these settlements could become rich. Because all of a sudden tourism, Israeli and non-Israeli tourism came. A lot of uh, houses where you can come and have village, uh, you know, entertainment. And uh, people in Israel were not afraid anymore to come here because they used to shoot us. I told you that, uh, you see the third, this is about four, five hundred meters high, the Golan, okay? So, if you are thinking, a third of it was under Israeli control and that was the border. The two thirds was Syrian. And inside the mountain uh, stomach was a lot of bunkers. That is why it was so hard to climb on the Six Days War when they wanted to, to climb up. The, the Arabs could shoot the, the Israeli forces very easily because they were inside and they were coming up, they, they could be seen, you understand? And uh, uh, when the Golan Heights was freed, that was uh, the, the time when all these areas became holiday areas for Israelis. Now think about it, many of you come from Europe or from the States or from America, South America. You have there so huge areas. You can drive kilometers and in. You can go to waters and lakes and waterfalls and whatever. What do we have here? Just this little lake to come on holiday with children or to go down to the Dead Sea. The children don't like it. It's Dead Sea. It's very salty. It's very hot. So the parents can go to the Red Sea in Eilat or here. Zell. That's it. So it's not much, you know, that is why Israelis like to travel out, because they feel always they are in a little closed prison island, as if, as if, if you understand. That's it. Now, uh, going back to the kibbutz, what was the kibbutz? When the land was bought, pieces of land was bought, those Jews that were communistic, you know, the communism was just beginning, 19, uh, when was the war? In 1919, right? Yeah, it ended in 18. Started in the started in 19. In 19, right. So just before, there was a lot of communistic propaganda, especially in Russia and all those places. And those Jews that are settling here first in 1882 uh, were uh, people that were not communistic yet, but later come in the beginning of the 20th century, communistic, propagandized people. And this is why Israel was founded actually with the living cow sheds and we import meat. We grow much of our vegetables uh, here in Israel, but meat we cannot grow. On the Golan Heights on your right, there are 10% of the meat from cows that we eat. 90% is imported from Brazil and Argentina. Brazil. Yeah, Brazil and Argentina, they are huge countries and they have a lot of prairies, a lot of cows that are grazing and we are importing it, but it is imported deep frozen. Deep frozen. So to buy in Israel fresh meat is expensive, okay? Not like the United States or America where you have so much. Now take a look on your left. Do you see the tower on the top of the mountains of the Lower Galilee? One tower? Yeah. That's Tiberias from this side. We saw it from when we came and now you see it from here. Tiberias is the only city around the lake, as you can see. 
in a kibbutz, since it was a communistic settlement, the idea was everybody works in every job. It shown to be very stupid indeed. And why? Because if you're a nurse, you cannot be an orange plucker. It's, it's not very uh, logic. logic. But in the beginning, this was the idea. After some years, after some decades, they found out that it is not a good idea and they started like uh, uh, giving people a job that would fit their character. You will be in this, you will be in that, you will be this. You will be. It's the place where Jesus slept in the house of Peter, first of all. And for the other thing, this is the place where he also uh, healed many people according to the New Testament. He came one day out of the synagogue and many people were sick. He was in the house of Simon Peter and then they came to him and he healed them. Capernaum is the house of Simon Peter and therefore in Capernaum today there are nothing but ruins of those days and archaeological digs and the place has been bought by the Vatican it is a Catholic uh, uh, archaeological place with the holy church which is built above the house of Simon Peter. And the synagogue, you can also see there the synagogue in which Jesus uh, preached. But it's not the synagogue of Jesus because this is a synagogue from the 6th century. But there is a synagogue that you can see the ruins of under it. And this was the synagogue that Jesus preached in. See here is the entrance to Capernaum, to your left. The road is leading there. And now you, if you take a look, you will see a house. Do you see a black house with basalt? You see that? That is the monastery of the Catholic uh, uh, monks, the Franciscan monks, that is holding the whole area where uh, 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 Jesus lived. This is called the village of Jesus. Some tours are going down there and visit all those ruins. Capernaum. Oh, man.
That's it. We're about to reach our destination. That's the sign on the... Wait. Yeah, Wait. We have people of our... Uh... Everyone is going to get to the same place. Don't worry, sir. Yes, I know. Yes, but but uh, give spice. Give spice. Pay attention, your people. É que o gajo vinha completamente colado a nós. Acho que é isto. Até que a senhora não viste, a senhora caiu. Claro. Por isso é que eu mandei tomar conta das pessoas dele. if you understand what I mean. And since it is like that, of course in Iran today, uh, but also centuries, how come they become here? How come it is, has become by accident the center? Because the second men who believed in what Mirza Ali was uh, preaching, he took his bones in a pot and he was expelled to the Turkish area of the empire, of the Turkish empire. And this country, Eretz Israel, Palestine, was a part of the Turkish empire, remember. So he comes here in 1850, and he decides, because the, if you came here in 1850, this is before the Jewish return to Israel, right? Mm -hmm. So what would you find here? Would you find all these buildings? Nothing. Nothing. Uh, you would just find here a green forest, and Mount Carmel. So he decided to buy here this area today. It's worth millions. <laughs> but at that time it was, you know, just a little piece of land. Okay, take it and bury your uh, leader of whoever you believe to. So this is just the grave of the first one, the Bab, which in their belief is like John the Baptist, who comes to tell about that the Messiah is soon to be to come. And the second one who brought his bones and built this building, uh, the second man is, is Baha'u'llah. What does it mean, Baha'u'llah? The light of God. And in Persian, if you count how many numbers the word Baha'u'llah, the name Baha'u'llah is worth, it will give you the number 19. Transport is not taking heed, and don't run because all those, you know, organization of workers didn't allow to work up quickly in the port, and there were strikes. And uh, thank you for your help. <coughs> Everybody gave me the machines. Yes. Thank you. Otherwise, I'll have to pay Anybody needs water? Is thirsty? I have steel bottles. Somebody needs? Lift your hand. No? We can send it back? No. Okay, thank you. Michael will have a lot of water for his wife.
stupid and I think it's very strange but anyway I don't like strange buildings but this is my problem and uh, he says that that is the place where the municipality is all the governmental uh, institutions and and so on take a look again and this is the Baha'i Gardens once again see the beauty of them see and uh, so this is the building uh, of the municipality and the governmental uh, uh, ministries in Haifa because Haifa is a kind of a metropolis for all the Galilee, the lower, upper and uh, the northern area. You know what's 